Hi teachers, let's talk about five things you can do to build relationships with your students. Well, first of all, why is it so important to create these connections? Well, one reason is because, let's face it, Maslow is greater than Bloom. In other words, until you've created a classroom environment that feels safe and respectful for your students, you're really not gonna be able to move up Bloom's taxonomy with your kids and teach them the different skills. Um, I mean, they may learn them in the short term, but in, you know, for long-term memory and, and long-term learning, you really have to establish that safe environment. So what are these five things that you can do? Number one, let the kids tell their stories, especially in the beginning of the year. I know it can get kind of rambly sometimes um, with younger kids, but it's important because real learning is happening when children connect the new concept that you're talking to them about and prior knowledge. So, um, oh, for example, one year I had this student who every time he raised his hand, the first thing he said was, one time on the Discovery Channel? Because he was constantly connecting the new information we were talking about to something he had watched on Discovery. Um, but really, uh, when you're presenting this new information, allowing them to make that connection between the information and something they've read, something they've seen on television, a movie that they've seen, or one time with my cousin, you know, those stories that they like to tell. Now, of course, um, you have to monitor and you can't let, you know, 15 kids all tell a story, but there uh, are ways to do that productively and, and sometimes um, as you move through the year, you're able to sort of shave, definitely shave that down. A lot of times I'll see a lot of hands up and I'll say, question or story, question or story. We're saving stories for later. However, I will say, number one is definitely, especially in the beginning of the year, letting them tell their stories. That's how um, you start building those connections. Number two, watch some of their TV shows. And I know this can be hard because you might not want to watch something on the Disney Channel that's marketed to 10 year olds. Uh, however, it does help build the connection when they see that you understand something they consider really relevant. Um, not just so that you can, when you're walking down the hall, say, hey, did you see the latest episode of whatever, but necessarily, in class, it's a it's good to be able to relate, let's say if you're in reading class and you're talking about characterization or you're talking about some kind of conflict or a plot structure or something, you could say, hey, it's just like on, and then that's a point of reference that you know the majority of them will understand. Um, I don't, in my class, I teach fifth graders, and in my class, I don't do that with movies, uh, simply because, you know, by fifth grade, they're all, 10 turning 11 mostly through the school year and some parents especially if there are older siblings are allowing their kids to watch pg-13 movies and other families are not so um i usually don't try to use movie references so much as i do with the tv shows let's see uh something else you can do oh this one always wins how about you always talk about remember when you were little Okay, this is number three. Always referring back to, remember when you were little? And that is something that they can obviously all relate to. They obviously, you know, even though they're only in fifth grade, they, and they, you know, think they're the big kids, they still relate to um, common experiences or again, common television shows or something that they played or watched when maybe they were in kindergarten. Um, a lot of times at my school, I'll, I'll say, you know, remember when you were in Miss Floyd's class and she would always talk about, you know, or um, a lot of times I can also say, um, remember when you were little and Barney was on? And of course they all, oh, you know, we don't like that. Well, you know, and I'll say, but why do you think four-year-olds like it? Because there's not a scary bad guy. You know, it's a it's a plot structure without an antagonist. It doesn't necessarily have a bad guy, it just has a problem. So, um, let's see. One can be letting them tell their stories. Two can be watching their television shows. Three, link back to remember when you were little. And then it's great to share stories from when you were little. 
um, my kids get a big kick out of it. And I don't just sort of say, oh, one, I remember one time, you know, it depends on if we're reading a story and there's some kind of conflict. And I'll say, oh yeah, one time I remember when I was little, my brother and I, and that sort of starts the, and they, it's so cute to watch their little faces when they're like, well, you were, what? You did what? And you, you played and you did this and that. Um, it just, when you share little bits of your life with your student, students, they become so much more invested in you as a person and it just makes them more likely to listen to you and trust you when therefore uh, listen to the information that you are presenting during class. So uh, that's another great way to start those connections. Um, you do have to be careful, especially for those of you that teach older kids. Obviously, you can't share your problems with your students. You know, you don't need to say, oh yeah, my husband and I got in an argument last night over money. You know, obviously you don't do that kind of thing. But you can share um, things about yourself in the hopes that one day, if the students are having some kind of problem, they will realize they can share with you because, again, you've established a connection there. Um, another surefire way I have found to build connections is to be able to talk sports. And honestly, um, my interest in sports is pretty limited. However, in the morning when I'm getting ready, um, I have a teenage son and he likes to have ESPN um, Sports Center on in the morning. So I can get enough summary of what's happening in sports to be able to at least chime into a conversation that I hear boys and girls having in class or um, uh, you know, if I hear them talking about a couple of basketball players, I can throw out another name. Well, what do you think about so-and-so? You know, just so that they're like, what? You, you're you interested in this? You what? You pay attention to these things? You know, because it, again, um, at an elementary level, they still think you are at home dressed exactly as you are at school and reading and only thinking about school time stuff. So again, sharing a little bit of um, things that you like, uh, in interjecting your personality into things, um, it, it just helps establish those connections. Um, the only other thing, and truthfully, this is what I'm not so great at, is um, just like you know just enough about maybe what's happening in the world of sports, or at least that's how I am, that I can have a conversation. I don't know enough about the world of video games, and I would say this is number five, video games. Um, if, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a child that's close to the age of the kids you're teaching, then you're more likely to sort of be up to date on the things that kids are talking about. Um, but once you're an older teacher and that means your kids are older, but you're still teaching elementary kids, thus myself, um, you have to make an effort to stay sort of current with what they're talking about. Like this whole Fortnite thing, I had to, you know, actually take some time and look it up and what are they talking about? And you know, there's this YouTube channel where the family like dances like the different characters in the video game and evidently it's a really big deal and I need to pay attention to these things. Um, again, let's see, we had let them tell their stories, pay attention to their television shows, not necessarily, for me, not necessarily their movies. Do the old, remember when you were little, that was number three. Number four can be paying attention to sports. Number five would be paying attention to what's relevant in the world of video games and YouTube. Um, for example, it really helped me out once I took the time to look up Dude Perfect. Yes, I mean, those guys are pretty amazing and I had no idea. You know, I could just hear kids talking about it and I thought, okay, this is something that's very relevant to them, very entertaining to them, very important to them, and therefore it needs to be something I can have a conversation about. It needs to be something I'm connecting. This is a way for me to connect with my students, to know what they're talking about and to be able to, you know, contribute just enough to a conversation that they're having. So again, um, even though I broke it down into five different things, really what I'm saying is you can start building your connections with kids by paying attention to things that are relevant to the kids. Um, real world kind of stuff. And again, you don't do this just so you can have casual conversation on the way to the lunchroom. Hey, did you see the latest 
episode of Dude Perfect? No, I mean, you're not trying to just, you know, have conversation. These are things that you can refer to in class that make you more human to your students. And therefore, once they start to feel that um, safety with you, that sense of connection with you, you know, you're taking care of Maslow in your classroom environment and all of that hierarchy of needs, that's when moving through Bloom becomes so much easier as a teacher because they trust you and they might even admit that they like you and therefore they're willing to let you teach them. Okay, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all the kind of good stuff. See you next time.